The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence. <laughs> in the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. The report is that the president is dead. The word we have is that he is dead, that he was sh shot by an assassin at the intersection of Elm and Houston Street uh, just as he was going into the underpass. The word we have is from a doctor on the staff of Parkland Hospital who says that it is true. He was in tears when he told me just... No way! No way! No way! No way! But everybody knows that we have paid. Obviously, we've already been paying for our water. But also, over the last seven years, we've paid 31 billion euros in austerity measures. We've paid with health cuts, with education cuts, with welfare cuts, with pension cuts. We've paid with the household tax, with the property tax, with the universal social charge. And what have we paid for? We've paid for the biggest bank bailout in all of Europe. 41% of the European banking debt. We've paid 8 billion euros a year to the bondholders. And what we've paid for is a recovery. Not a recovery for the majority, not a recovery for working people, but a recovery for the rich and the super rich. The richest 300 people in this state, number three being Dennis O'Brien, 
Ooh. They've increased their wealth in the course of the crisis by 60%. In 2010, they had 50 billion euros between them. In 2014, they have 84 billion euros. And that's the significance of the water bills, because they're asking us to pay again. And in saying no way, we won't pay. We're not just saying we won't pay these extra double, treble tax water charges. We're saying we're not gonna pay the bondholders. We're now saying we're not gonna pay for the banker's debt. And we're saying we're not paying for your recovery anymore. We demand a recovery for the majority. And the significance of it, it's much beyond the water charges and everybody knows it. This country and politics in this country has been transformed by the anti-water charges movement. It's been transformed because after seven years of sellouts by the main trade union leaders, after seven years of betrayals by the Labour Party, people have stood up in communities, on the streets, in organisation, and have felt their own power. People have struck a blow against the austerity agenda, and people feel confident in a way that they didn't feel over the past seven years. And so we have to go on and actually organise for victory. This is organised by the Non-Payment Network. That's an attempt to bring together all groups who understand the importance of non-payment together. Regardless of their differences on other questions, we need a united movement for non-payment. We need groups to come together in this network to mobilise more protests of tens of thousands to share information on building non-payment in the most effective way. And we need to keep our eye on the prize here. The prize is, in 10 weeks, 12 weeks time, Irish water in absolute crisis. The prize is a government in absolute turmoil, a spiral of crisis faced with mass non-payment. But the biggest prize is, it's a 99% in this country standing tall, standing strong and confident that we can take on this government, we can bring down this government and we can bring down austerity and we can do the same with any future government. Because we can go further in transforming politics in this country. From this movement, we can build the biggest left working class challenge to the rule of the 1% ever seen in this state. That's what's potentially here in this movement. And we have to go and do it. It has to flow from the non-payment struggle. The elections are not an alternative to actually fighting the water charges but it's an extra nail in the coffin of the water charges. If we build 40%, 50% non-payment, and then we stand non-payment, anti-austerity, anti-water char charges candidates, it's another nail in the coffin of austerity, like the victory we had in Dublin South West in the by-election. And so we need communities across the country to discuss, to discuss standing in the elections on a non-payment basis, together with other serious left groups who are organizing on that basis. The We Won't Pay campaign after this protest has a meeting in the Alexander Hotel on Fenian Street for people to come together and to discuss those things. And so I just want to get people to think about that prize. That's ahead of us if we organize correctly. Mass non-payment can sink Irish water and the water charges but then we can have an almighty challenge to the rule of the establishment. A political challenge that is based on struggle, based on democratic control from below of the communities, discussing, selecting candidates, deciding on policy. And it cannot make the mistakes of the past. It can't be controlled from the top down. It can't be dominated by any section of a trade union or labor bureaucracy and it has to be in principle against austerity. It has to say it cannot repeat the mistakes of the past 
of saying we'll go into government with pro-capitalist forces to take the edge off austerity. We're not interested in a slightly bigger slice of the cake here. We're interested and we can build a movement to take the whole cake. We need to build a movement, a movement for a principled left government. That's a government that breaks with the logic of austerity. It's a government that breaks with the rules of the Euro, with the rules of the EU that says we're not gonna pay your debt and we'll stand up to whatever you do against us. It's a left government that breaks with the logic of capitalism. And it's a government that it's what we need, that isn't just interested in getting a few people in to ministerial position, but a government that's committed to opening the door, not just for the left being on government, but for a transfer of power. That's what we need in this country. We need to wrest power from the 1%, economically, politically, from the Dennis O'Briens, from the bankers, from the bondholders, for a revolution in this country, for real, fundamental, and socialist change, for the power of the majority, and we can build a movement from the anti-water charges movement to do that. Thank you very much.